So, Anduin, are you looking forward to the 9.1 PTR this week? No. Oh, why not? There's going to be lots of fun new things to try out. I don't care. I've got to go. Where are you going? Out! Is it to see your new friend the Jailer again? We've told you before, Anduin, we don't think he's a good influence on you. Oh, you don't understand, Mum. He mind controls me, so I have to do everything he says. So if the Jailer told you to jump off a cliff, you would, would you? Yes, Mum, because he mind controls me. I wouldn't have a choice. I told you you didn't understand. Anduin, don't talk to your mother that way, please. I'm not his mother. You can't tell me what to do. You're not my real dad. I'm not his real dad. We're not his his parents. Okay, that's it, Anduin. You're grounded. He's gone. What happened to Anduin? He used to be so angelic. I blame video games. Knowledge is power. Hello, Internet. Taliesin here, and welcome to another episode of the Weekly Reset, Taliesin and Evertel's Wondrous Wisdom Show. And this is it, fam. After around 140 days since the launch of Shadowlands, we are about to get our first major content update, a new patch, 9.1, with all the exciting new areas and story and system upgrades and dungeons and raids. And of course, when I say we get our first major content update, I don't mean, like, it's going live. Obviously, no, don't be silly. I mean it's going on to the PTR for testing, so the patch itself is likely at least a couple of months away at this point. And of course, when I say all the exciting new stuff, obviously I don't mean all of it. No, it's the first week of PTR on a patch that is clearly lagging behind a bit. It'll be whatever Blizz feel ready to have us test, which I'm suspecting won't be loads, but it might be loads. I don't know, I'm not Ian Hazacostis, and you can tell that's the case, because if I were, things would be a little bit different around here. Like, there'd be a whole lot more Tuscars for a start. But it's all kind of moot anyway, because we will soon find out. The encrypted vendor build of 9.1 is already sitting there, tantalizingly. The playable PTR could drop at any point from this video onwards. It hasn't dropped yet. Or maybe it has! More likely, it'll drop about an hour after this video goes live, because that's genuinely what usually happens. And joking aside, I think that's pretty likely, because I would guess we're probably going to be getting our first peak of Chains of Domination relatively early in the week, like Monday, or Tuesday, or maybe Wednesday, Thursday, or even Friday, and you can quote me on that, I'm very confident about that. From a creator point of view, it is both a blessing and a curse. Obviously it's great news because there's actually some new content to talk about, and not just the content itself, but of course however much of the content is available in this first week should be able to give us more evidence as to when this patch might actually go live. Because if Corthia is there in all its shiny glory, story and world quests in place, with the Broker Mythic Mega Dungeon available for testing, all of the new Covenant upgrades fully fleshed out with the new 40 levels of renown, each sitting pretty with rewards in place and ready to be earned, with a plethora of new Soulbind tree branches and conduits and empowered conduits, if that's what's waiting for us this week, then yeah, you know, maybe this bad boy isn't as far away as many of us feared. I mean, it will still be the longest opening patch in all of WoW history, let's not suck ourselves off just yet, but honestly, if it looks like it might be ready to ship before August, then I'm gonna celebrate the good news where I can find it. If though, as I suspect, there isn't much in the way of the new Moor area or the dungeon, if this week is more about Covenant stuff and soul binds and conduits, then great, because that's numbers stuff which will need as much testing as possible, but also, Lasai, because obviously in that case, Chains of Domination would seem to be as late in the year as we all suspected and have speculated ad nauseum. And yes, I'm fully aware that many, if not all of you, will be watching this video after the PTR is live and we all know exactly what's in it and that's okay. Feel free to laugh at me in the comments for how wrong I am. I deserve it. What it does definitely mean is that there is going to be some spoilers coming on social media and on this channel. Spoilers for the story of the patch from the playable parts of the PTR itself, but also from the data mining that WoW 
Hophead will be doing the second they are able to rummage around inside all of that lovely code and see what's what. So this seems like a good time to remind you of the spoiler warning system that we have in place on this show, because we want you to be able to watch the weekly reset and know that you'll always get fair warning when the spoils are coming. We have our blue bot and red bot spoilers, which will show on screen and be marked as individual chapters in the video. Blue bot spoilers are something that Blizzard themselves has put out there, but which we consider a bit spoilery. So for example, if the first thing that happened when we logged into the PTR was a dreadlord comes up to us and is all like, ah ha ha, it was me all along. That's a blue bot spoiler because it's revealing the story, but it's not a secret. Blizz have put it in front of us themselves. They know we're going to see it and they are ready for us to see it. A red bot spoiler would be if that dreadlord wasn't in the playable PTR, but the voice lines of him going, ah ha ha, it was me all along, had been data mined. In this case, it's a proper bad spoiler in every case. And when I say bad, I obviously mean great. That's the kind of thing that I get really excited about. But you know what I mean. Either way, there will be plenty of warning and you will be very easily able to skip those bits on the show because we care. No spoiler bots at all this week though, obviously because there's no PTR reveals in this episode, but there is some interesting Shadowlands news to talk about. I know. As Blizzard revealed their new Mythic Plus eSports tournament, which sounds genuinely really brilliant. Fair play. The established MDI format that you'll be used to involves two dungeon teams in a head-to-head -head race against each other in the same dungeon, in a best out of whatever to gain victory and to progress to the next round against new opponents. Pretty standard tournament format, and it's a great way of watching high-end dungeon play. Two teams drilled and practiced to within an inch of their lives, blasting through a high, but not really very high, key in the most efficient way possible, which can be absolutely thrilling. But for me, this is one of the main selling points of Mythic Plus Dungeons, the idea that half the fun is in pushing and progressing keys to the highest level possible. So at the time of writing, the highest key anyone has managed in the live game for a Shadowlands dungeon is a plus 26. Only Necrotic Wake and Plaguefall have been completed at that level with only a handful of players across those keys. And the highest sanguine depths anyone has managed up to now is a 24. And I know we're all thinking it, so I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. That's about eight levels higher than anyone should be bothering with sanguine depths, because seriously, screw sanguine depths, screw the sanguine depths shit gauntlet of shit hell, and also screw everything else about sanguine depths. But in the new upcoming tournament, that is not a luxury that anyone will have, because it is all about completing the highest keys possible across all dungeons. For five hours a day, across three days, the six qualifying teams will be able to access the gear and keys that they want, abandon and restart them at their leisure, and rack up the highest scores on them as they can, with the winner being the quintet with the highest aggregate, not average, score across all dungeons for an eye-watering prize pool of... 8,000 bucks for the winning team, which is 1,400 each. Hey, it's better than nothing, just about. And I am not a huge esports guy, but honestly, this is a tournament that I'm really excited about watching. I like the idea that the coverage will alternate between six teams all doing their own thing at the same time, which as a broadcast is going to make it feel much more like the Race to World first raid streams than a standard MDI. And I really want to see just how high these keys can go with standardized gear on a tournament round. It appears to capture what I find most interesting about Mythic Plus in a way that the standard MDI doesn't. And I think that whoever at Blizz Esports came up with this idea should be congratulated on a cool idea. I really hope you weren't one of the hundreds of Blizz Esports people recently laid off after yet another year of record profits and payouts for Activision shareholders and CEOs. Or maybe you were, because you might have noticed there's one thing I haven't told you about the new tournament yet, and that is the name. And before I do, I'd like to tell you a little story. A cautionary tale, if you will. A defining moment in internet history, which if you aren't from the UK, you may have missed entirely, but which honestly should be taught in schools forevermore. The year was 2012. The internet wasn't exactly young, but it was perhaps more innocent. Like Wendy's hadn't started tweeting sarcastic replies to the McDonald's account, you know? The world was a much better place. And so into this space of relative naivety stepped one Susan Boyle, a 50-year-old contestant on the third series of Britain's Got Talent, who captured the nation's hearts with renditions of Les Mis songs which were 
fine. They were fine. She was definitely an okay singer. She finished second in that show, but people loved her. Her first and second albums made her only the third act ever to top both UK and US album charts twice in the same year in 2010. To date, she has sold 19 million records and by all accounts is a lovely person too. Fair play Susan Boyle. But Susan Boyle's social media team weren't so great. For the release of her fourth album, Standing Ovation, they decided to run a live Twitter listening party and Q&A, which they advertised with the following tweet. Susan will be answering your questions at her exclusive album listening party on Saturday. Send in your questions, hashtag Susan Album Party, Susan HQ. And this tweet, ladies and gentlemen, taught the world a very important lesson. It taught us you always capitalize new words in a hashtag. Because this tweet with this hashtag was seen by millions of people all over the world, by children and old ladies, all of whom would have been very excited to attend the Susan album party and shared the tweet and the hashtag with all of their friends, just as her media team would have planned and hoped, completely oblivious to the fact that the human brain being the funny thing that it is, a majority of people who saw it wouldn't read the word words Susan album party, would they? No. Boyle's team had just invited millions of people to come and enjoy Sue's anal bum party. The title was perfectly innocent. It made perfect sense in context, but when it was isolated in hashtag form, it wasn't Susan album party of classic show tunes that people were imagining. It was the existential horror of Sue's anal bum party. And inviting the entire world to Sue's anal bum party is obviously one of the greatest moments of internet history. One that should be celebrated, but also learned from. And I'm not sure the WoW Esports team have learned from it, you know, because they called their tournament the Great Push. Which, I mean, I'm sure we've all been there, right? Like you haven't eaten enough fruit or roughage for a couple of days, and what should be a routine trip to the facilities turns into a white knuckle thrill ride, or great push. Like Susan Album Party, it absolutely makes sense for a name in context. Like Sue's Anal Bum Party, they really should have dropped it. But no, they called their tournament the Great Push. It sounds like someone having a massive poop. There's nothing we can really do about it now, apart from try to enjoy an interesting online esports event called the Great Push, while desperately trying not to think of someone having a big poo every time the casters refer to the Great Push. If you can manage it, congratulations. There's no way I'm going to manage it. It's always going to sound like a big poo to me, but it's the name they went with, and now they have no choice but to follow through. And yes, I did just spend two pages of script talking about that, and not just because there isn't loads of news this week, but also because I really don't want to talk about the new TBC Classic boosted leveling experience, okay? There's a level 58 boost which will be available to buy once per account for Burning Crusade Classic, not available to Draenei or Blood Elf characters, and to facilitate those fresh level 58 characters arriving in the world, there's a new starting experience for them, with new quests that obviously weren't in the original game. And, you know, hashtag really quite a lot of rather big changes now, Illidan Album Party. And yeah, okay, the quests are basically nothing. Your class trainer in Stormwind or Orgrimmar, or Thunderbluff if you're a Tauren Druid, because there's no Druid trainer in TBC Orgrimmar, which is clearly a more sacred detail to preserve than whether players had to actually level or not, give you a bag with your weapons and supplies, tell you to equip your weapon, use your talent points, and then sends you on a quick trip around the town. It's not really a tutorial, because it doesn't really teach you anything. It just kind of makes the opening moments of a boosted character's life a bit more natural feeling. If a boost exists, it makes sense to have these. It's a bit more involved than starting right outside the dark portal. And if you don't think a boost should exist, and honestly, fair enough, then it's the boost you can have a real problem with and not these meaningless quests. The whole, is a boost a good idea for the game or not debate is not one that I'm going to get into today, because this is meant to be a short episode. And also, we've talked about them before on the show that is appearing on screen now. But I can see it from both sides, both from those, probably majority of players, who want just to be able to come along and enjoy TBC, 
and also from those who are worried that skipping the 1 to 60 classic leveling experience detracts from the player's overall experience of the game rather than going through the proper route of paying a mage to boost you through dungeons. I mean, slow, meaningful progress. I'm joking, but I genuinely do see both sides, and people who care a lot more about TBC than me generally see the boost as a bad thing, so I'm going to respect their superior investment into this game and take their opinion very seriously. I'm generally a hashtag no changes Karazhan album party kind of guy anyway. I want an experience as close to the original as I can get because my interest comes from a place of never having played the original. So honestly, I'd even rather the other changes the classic community generally approve of, like the paladin seals or the drums and stuff weren't being included either. But again, I will respect the opinion of those who care a lot more than me on this one. It's an interesting and ongoing thing to keep tabs on for sure. Raid testing on Karazhan starts soon and it will be interesting to see if there are any more changes there because it has been hinted there might be. And of course, we still don't know what role that data mined new mount is going to play. But if you take anything away from this section, let it be this. Don't boost a Tauren Druid, okay? It's a long ass walk to the Dark Portal from Thunderbluff. She's back! Hi! Avatel's back! Hello. Do the thing with your eyes! Hello. Do the thing with your eyes! The laser. Do the thing with to... your eyes where you don't use glasses. <laughs> well, here it is. Ah, oh, it's amazing! Such <laughs> skills! Ooh, such talent! Look at those wow. peepers. Look at those peepers. I mean, exactly to most people. Exactly the same as before. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> exactly the same as before, just enhanced. Yeah, I mean, you do, it's not like, I mean, you do often wear glasses on the weekly reset, but you are also in the habit of making sure that you wear contacts on the weekly reset, because apart from anything, there's less glare from lights and cameras it's and things like wise. that. It's literally wise. And, <laughs> uh, so, like, you don't look that different to a lot of people right now, uh, but to me, you've been walking around for, like, the best part of a week now without any glasses at all. I know. Seeing things. I wake like, up in the I'm, morning, I see things, I go to sleep, I see amazing. things. It's, it's wild. It's crazy. We're, we're, like, out of the park, and she'll be like, Hey, wow, look at the fly on that flower over there. Like a mile away. In Lewisham. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I can see now. Uh, my eyes have healed for the most part. Um, and we didn't have you doing a segment this week just because no. it's a really quick episode. We had a funny intro we wanted to get out. And we just wanted to pave the way and get ready for 9.1 this week. Are you ready? I think so. I mean, you'll be able to see it. You'll I'll be, be able, able to like, see it. I feel a bit behind at the moment, but maybe I am ready. Maybe you'll be able to stream it as well. Because another thing that happened this week, Evertel did her first ever solo stream my on the channel. First, me. On our Twitch myself, channel. With for like, Tally upstairs monitoring of and course. every now and then jumping in chat yeah totally and <laughs> and just like reminding everyone that uh, tally is the best if you want to check out our stream schedule you can just click on the link to our twitch channel in the description below obviously check all the wowhead articles first but after that after you that. know check our twitch and things like that um <laughs> and and see when a my streams are because they're the best b when our dual streams are for mm -hmm. the grind oh when our wow killer our um, uh, podcast so with Garrett Weinzel is, so and, and when your solo stream is as well. So we've got oh. four different shows now on How Twitch. How cool is that? Which is really great, and because you're doing some of that, it means I will have more time to make videos, uh, and so there should be more content Everybody on wins. the YouTube, which is the main event Especially anyway. Especially you guys, because well, I, you just get more. So the idea is that next week's Weekly Reset can be a big old deep dive into everything big that we found. Chunker. Everything that we found when we logged in, mm -hmm. and maybe even more importantly, maybe even more fun, everything that Wowhead found oh. when they were able Able to gain access to the holiest of holies, yes. to the inner sanctum <laughs> um, of that data mining goodness. So plenty to be looking forward to then. Obviously, we will be talking about it all on stream uh, throughout the week. And we've got multiple videos planned and coming out uh, in the next couple of weeks too. Ah, oh, it's all so exciting. Oh, it's, it's all kicking off. Oh, it feels good to have some wow on yeah. the go. Yeah. feels good. Uh, I feel like I'm ready for a great push. Just to clear everything, ready for uh, all the playing. But thank you for joining us uh, for this episode. If you liked it, don't thank us. Thank our patrons who give their actual real-life money to make all of our work happen. And patrons, now that everything can see, now that everything is settled down with her new setup downstairs, I promise we'll be back on the Q&As. Um, and studio tours, because we've got your studio yeah, to give a tour around now like as well. Studio. We've got my new PC, patrons. And my neon is coming next week. Oh my good Patrons, I envy you. I I envy you for the amazing oh. behind the scenes videos oh. that you're going to be getting. It's, ah, oh, my Can't goodness. Wait. Wow, thank you. If you didn't like it, downvote the shit out of it. Remember, my name is Stiven. He's going to be a busy, busy boy. Busy, busy boy. Oh, I can't wait. No, my name is Taliesin from me. And me, Evertel. And an Iron 2. Until next time, cheerio. <laughs>